Hello, Namaskar and a very good evening to everyone watching NCRT's live interactive program. I am Simran Singh and you have all connected with us through eVidya channel number 6 to 12. Besides this, there are so many different mediums through which you can all connect with us. You can even participate in our live conversations by raising your questions and your queries in the comment section of our YouTube channel that goes by the name NCERT Official. And learners, this is our 5 hours, 5 days online training program on financial safety in cyberspace. So today it's Monday and we are starting our training program and till 9th of August we are here discussing more about the different aspects of financial safety in cyberspace. So telling you more about these 5 days online training program, uh, let us quickly have a look at our screens in order to understand more. So all you have to do in order to gain all the details is just click on our web page, you know it is ciet.ncrt.gov.in. So we already have our web page open for all of you. Just click on activities and workshop slash training. Then you will be navigated towards this page. Click on online training on financial safety in cyberspace. And once you scroll down, you will get to know all the details, the titles, the topics for, for these five days, five hours online training program. Day one, that is today we are going to discuss and start our training program on recent cybercrime trends in the financial frauds and CFMC. So similarly for the other four days as well, we have our training program for all of you discussing the different aspects of financial security in the cyberspace. Now who all can participate whether it's the students, teachers, teacher educators, parents, administrators, all those who are interested can participate in the training program either by raising your questions in the comment section of our YouTube channel that's NC ERT official or you can also give us a call at our contact numbers and connect with us through our email ID. Now how you can all participate with us for the course and also the post session activity. Step number one is registration. Register yourself by clicking on this link or by scanning the QR code. Step number two is watching the live training sessions and learning about the topic. So you know that we have started our online training program today and for the next four days as well at this particular timing 4 till 5 pm we have our training program. Now step number three is taking up the online course participate in the post assessment and get certified. You can join the online course that will be launched on the Iksha portal your course link. This will be open till 30th of March 2025. Join the course, go through all the five videos. Take up the final assessment in the course and you can attempt the assessment only thrice. If you score over 70%, then you can receive a certificate from CIT and CRT. And we keep on saying that your feedback matters a lot. So here is the link for your feedback. Click on this link, share your feedback or either by scanning this QR code, you can share your feedback with us. Now you can always reach out to us through this particular mail ID that is training.helpisk at the rate cret.nic.in or giving us a call at this contact number that goes as 8800-440-559. Now it's time to introduce you to the resource person for today's program who will be discussing more on the recent cyber crime trends in financial frauds and CFMC. We have with us Sri Akhilesh Gorji. Namaskar sir, bahut bahut swagat hai aapka. Uh, we welcome you in the conversation and I would also like to introduce you to all our learners. Sri Akhilesh Gaur, he is an IOFS officer of 2016 batch. He currently holds the position of Deputy Director in Indian Cybercrime Coordination Centre, I4C, Ministry of Home Affairs. Sir, a very warm welcome to you and having a vast experience in this field, uh, we would request you to share some flowers from your bouquet of knowledge for all our learners. Thank you, Simraji. Thank you for such a warm welcome and my good evening to all the participants who have joined this session with us. So today we are going to discuss about recent cybercrime trends in financial frauds and these cybercrimes handling uh, center of the Indian Cybercrime Coordination Center, which is called as Cyber Fraud Mitigation Center. So from the side of Indian Cybercrime Coordination Center, I would like to throw some light upon what actually is happening uh, in cybercrimes all over the India and what is the exact situation of the financial cyber crimes in our country. So if you see presently uh, the cyber crime landscape which is of such kind that on a daily basis we are receiving around nearly 5000 complaints per day on our portal which is known as national cyber crime reporting portal. And if you calculate the total amount reported by our citizens who are innocent and being duped by these cyber criminals. So that is somewhere near on an average 50 crore rupees. 
on a daily basis. And uh, we have a cyber crime helpline, which is called as National Cyber Crime Reporting Helpline. And this helpline, uh, where 1930, is uh, utilized by all our citizens in uh, order to report the cyber crimes, where we see a daily traffic of almost 60,000 calls. And uh, these cyber crimes are being done with the innocent citizens. And when they are being done with the innocent citizens, so they are uh, the basic goal of the criminals is to dupe the money from the innocent citizens. So the money which is being duped from the innocent citizens, this uh, money is being transferred from citizens account to the various other fraudsters account, which are called as fraud account. So on a daily basis, we are seeing uh, uh, reporting of around 3,700 fraud accounts, or we call them dual accounts also. And the trend which we have seen recently is ki one complaint which is reported uh, in the portal and that is amounting to more than 50 lakh rupees. Such kind of uh, complaints, if you see such kind of uh, amounts being reported, we call them high value frauds, are around 35% within the NCRP portal. So these are the basic statistics which we have just seen. Now I would like to bring all of your attention towards ki how exactly the cyber crimes have changed and how they have modified themselves. So, if you see uh, this entire uh, slide and then this, uh, we have uh, shown some of the trends where 2019 to 2021, the trend of the cyber crime was not much. It was although increasing, but the increase was, was not much prevalent. And uh, this 22, 20, 2020 to 21 was a time period when the COVID struck all over the world and uh, people were uh, made, uh, were forced to stay inside. And because of that, the inclination towards the digital ecosystem, uh, the exposure of the digital ecosystem with the citizens, it increased by leaps and bounds. And suddenly the effect of that was seen in 2022, where the cyber crime got increased. All the financial and as well as other type of crimes, they got increased almost twice compared to 2021. So if you see the growth of the cyber crime for 21 to 22 is almost more than 100%, that is 113.7%. And since 2022 was a year where the much surge was observed and after that 2023 the surge was there almost we saw a surge of nearly 6 lakh cases but yes it was not double as it was from 21 to 22 and in 2024 as we have seen the data set in our portal that is national cyber crime reporting portal so up to 15th of the july we have received almost if you see uh, 11.2 lakh complaints and the, there are the cases which are being reported now here in August. So further, they are increasing. And as we can see, the total amount reported uh, has also been uh, mentioned in the downside. And, and the total lien amount with, which we call them is how much amount has been saved. So what used to happen earlier when the portal was not there, cyber crimes used to be reported. And then police used to investigate. And then there was a you know complete process, step by step process. But now because of the portal, what happens? because of the uh, existence of this portal, immediately amount is reported and the amount is immediately frozen within the system wherever digital channels it is available. So, portal gives a visibility where the money is going and portal helps all the stakeholders to freeze the money and to prevent the citizens hard earned money. Now, I would like to take all of you how the cyber crimes are being committed. What are the modes of operandi? What are the modes these criminals are opting to dupe the innocent citizens in the country and what sort of measures to be taken, what sort of preventive measures to be taken to, you know, keep ourselves isolated from these crimes. So if you see, as I can uh, show from this particular slide, that there are various types of crimes which are happening within the country. And the perpetrators of those crimes are two types. One who are sitting within the country, one who are uh, sitting within the nation and second who are out of the country, who are uh, uh, perpetrating from outside the nation. So the citizens, the people, the fraudsters who are perpetrating from within the country, they are resorting to you know less intensity of the cyber crimes. For example, the amount of money is less, and the uh, the particular set of citizens who are targeted, they are uh, given fixed set of citizens, and the type of crimes are impersonation. Maybe somebody will give you a call and say that your credit card limit is going to expire. Somebody will call you and say that uh, you want to book a ticket for the upcoming Ayodhya event and a call will be received within within your system and maybe ask you to update the details of your KYC or something like that. So they are being perpetrated from within the country. But when we talk about the intense cyber crimes, where the amount lost per citizen is very, very high. 
so that particular type of crimes are being uh, you know perpetrated from outside the nation and those crimes have transnational and trans boundary uh, consequences so if you see here the international origin crimes are of various types task based scams are there investment scams are there digital arrest type of things i'm going to explain in the upcoming slides and uh, illegal loan apps are there okay so all these type of uh, crimes which are international of origin so they are taking a toll on our citizens and they are making our citizens to lose lot of money in out of the system and that money is uh, being uh, you know uh, taken out of our country also so i'll come to one by one all these different different type of crimes the very first is digital arrest scam now what is this digital arrest if you see the modus operandi of this type of uh, scam so it is also called as parcel scam or it is also called as fedex scam so what happens exactly in this type of scam so an innocent innocent victim they receive a call generally from some state police or from some central police agency and uh, they are being accused in that phone call the person behaves the fraudster behaves or fraudster impersonate as a police person and they will call the victim and they say that <clears throat> a given drug parcel okay has been caught and that that's had drug parcel is in your name means you are responsible for that and you are being uh, you know prosecuted you will be prosecuted for that and uh, charges are being framed against you for uh, getting that particular drug parcel so this is the tactic used by the fraudsters and that tactic is creation of the fear psychosis and because of that many people who are not aware that such exactly such kind of thing exist against them or not they get duped and they uh, ultimately lose a lot of money in this so these calls are being generated outside the nation and these are spoof calls and uh, drug parcel or maybe some courier or maybe some sort of parcel which has uh, been given by your near dear ones and these fraudsters you know precisely target those people who have their near dear ones residing outside the system outside the country and uh, those uh, uh, their relatives who are residing outside the uh, country they uh, actually don't send anything but uh, these police personnel behave like that they are Uh, they are from cbi or they are from ed or narcotics or, or maybe some state police like that and ultimately they extort a lot of money out of the citizen so how do exactly this happen they will give a call and they will ask the victim to come to the skype and then they will do a video call so that video call they will uh, sit like i am sitting in front of you i am wearing a civil dress they will be wearing one police uh, uniform and behind them the entire this uh, studio will be like a police office like a police station and like that almost uh, i4c has pro proactively reported 1500 skype ids to microsoft for blocking and many ids are you can see in the screen they are in the name of central bureau of investigation mumbai police andheri east police like that in the name of our uh, uh, honorable police agencies these criminals are impersonating and thugging the citizens and citizens uh, ultimately uh, they are arresting the citizens in the in front of this digital system which is called as the digital arrest and you see in this uh, slide they will issue the note process like this and they will impersonate like a police personnel who standing in this particular slide if uh, you can see a fake police officer who is posing as a uh, you know uh, De delhi police and this so we have interrogated few people who have returned outside the nation and this we can see they are uh, issuing the genuine type of police notices although these all are fake but they are issuing it and when we see all these notices so being genuine uh, notices we also don't uh, you know uh, 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 just doubt them we find that yes they could be uh, genuine they could be original so ultimately it creates an element of fear in our minds and by getting that element of fear citizens are forced to provide some money in the name of extortion otherwise the, their details will be opened otherwise they will have to go to jail otherwise they will be prosecuted like that they are being threatened so this entire phenomena is happening within the country and which is causing a huge amount of money being taken out of the <clears throat> citizens pockets and this entire system of arresting a citizen in front of the screen is called as digital arrest we have seen the instances where the citizens have been forced to stay in front of the screen for almost 5 days and they have been traumatized extensively after the crime uh, occurs so when we uh, talk to the citizens they are not able to believe what has happened to them now once they take the money so on an average 20 to 25 lakh rupees let's say a citizen has lost now when they take out the money from the citizen from their bank accounts how do these criminals are using the money they are basically utilizing either by purchasing the golds to the exchanges out of the country by investing in the cryptocurrencies or by taking out the cash from the branches and when they take out the cash from the branches they transport this cash by means of hawala channels hawala is a legal channel of transporting the money from one country to another 
and also in some of the jurisdictions in some of the states they are doing atm withdraw withdrawing from the atm withdrawing from the branches and many other ways for example western union money transfer and other type of money transfer services paypal they are transferring the money to uh, international some countries also because their conglomerates are sitting outside the india and when the conglomerates are sitting outside the india they are helping them to perpetrate the perpetrate the crime and the money is also being sent to them so this was the first type of the modus operandi that's the rest which is generating a kind of fear psychosis now what is the second type if you see the second type of crimes these are kind of investment frauds now what are those investment frauds so everybody is using facebook instagram these days so in facebook instagram we have a habit of uh, seeing new things so what happens uh, now people uh, they are earning well and they have they are very much uh, you know aware about in doing investment in uh, various type of channels so when people are very much curious to invest so these criminals these cyber criminals are tapping this opportunity you know to lure the innocent citizens what they will do in the name of the genuine experts who are giving true expert advices they are issuing the fake advertisements within the google or instagram or facebook or other channels so when they are issuing the fake advertisement they will write like this on uh, three times money um, get ipos and invest in this you will get your money doubled within 3 months invest 10 lakh you will get 50 lakh so by seeing these advices by seeing these type of uh, stock trading platforms citizens get lured by these advertisements and they uh, just click to that link then they are forced to join some whatsapp group and when they join the whatsapp group this is a kind of a such a you know uh, attractive group where these citizens get messages in the group and the peers in the group they are speaking about the gains which they have made so i would like to make one thing clear here you what happens when the citizen join that whatsapp group there are many people who come forward and say hey i have earned in the last 30 days almost 30 lakh rupees and i have invested only 2 lakh rupees same happens i have doubled my money and i have tripled my money so basically these people who are you know giving their their success stories these are also the fraudsters these are also the cyber criminals these are hand in glove with them in order just to gain the confidence of the person joined in the group they will do these type of activities and this is how the person get confidence and innocent citizens start investing the money and when they invest the money they are giving they are being given a login and password like you are using any any of the portal like irctc we have a login and password so they are being given login and password and with that login when you invest 10 lakh rupees uh, you will see that your money is rising to 20 lakh rupees initially when you invest 50000 you get a return genuine return you get 1 lakh rupees so like that your confidence is gained so one by one you do invest and one by one in your portal which is nothing but a fake portal you see that your money is rising your amount is rising and after some time when you see that you have invested around lakhs or crores of rupees and when you want to withdraw it you are not able to withdraw it. and what happens when you give an application to withdraw when you want to submit uh, your request to withdraw they will ask you certain amount of taxes on that in the name of capital gains in the name of gst or some income tax because you have gained some money and when they ask you the tax you 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 just ultimately uh, find yourself in a situation when you are paying the taxes also so above the crores you are also again paying some tax and still you are not able to get the money because that is a fraud money this is how in the name of investment they in the name of performing some task they are luring city citizens innocent money and then once they take the money out of your pockets out of your bank account then they invest that money then they take out that money and layer it one bank account another bank account another bank account why they are doing this why they are taking money out of your bank account and investing in or or giving in other banks so that investigation becomes very very difficult we are not able to track that we are not able to catch that ki where the money has gone from one account to another account to the third to fourth like that layering of the account we call it and ultimately what happens ultimately the result is the money gets withdrawn out of the digital channels so one question was asked by who is doing that so many times when we tell all these the cyber crimes modus operandi so who is doing all these things who is the perpetrator so if we we saw various type of messages on the victims mobile phone and when we saw these messages we saw the messages are coming from numbers you can see in the screen the numbers are plus 27 plus 63 or, or maybe uh, some other numbers so these numbers they are not from india and they are from some external region and these numbers are from some countries in the southeast asia here also you can see the whatsapp the number is plus 62 where the first of all they are trying to uh, generate a kind of friendship 
with the victim they say hello and hi i'm this and that and then they will lead them towards some investment or they will lead them towards some sort of task based system where you will do the task you will get the money so when we investigated further we found out these numbers are from southeast asia you can see here it is written indonesia some are from the cambodia and thailand myanmar also so when we saw this when we investigated further we got to know that there are organized groups who are doing all these kind of things and what do they do they are luring the innocent citizens and they are calling them towards these nations in the name of jobs so various type of advertisements are being floated over the google over the facebook earn money earn good money within the system and when the advertisements you see or any person who is willing to do a job when they go to those advertisements they find themselves uh, they find themselves in avenues where what happens you are given an offer of the job and you are being called to some of the countries and when you they will give you some tickets also when you land to that country they will take you to some compounds which will look like a company but actually those are not companies those are the scam compounds where they will ask you to do scam scam to whom scam to the innocent citizens of our country so people of from our country are flew outside and then they have either by their choice or force to do all these things this concept is known as cyber slave so they have they have made people to do scamming to scam our own people not from india but from from external other countries also so in the name of job they are asking them to to uh, do scamming for the innocent citizens some people who protest who are not willing to do all these type of scams they are not ready to all these do, do all these kind of scams so they prefer to leave that place when when the cyber criminals get a hold of these people they torture them and there has been incidents of the torture coming forward and when some people have left that country or somehow they got managed they got uh, they managed to got free from that system and they landed back to the india they narrated their stories and when we got those stories we got to know that there is cyber slavery so this is the international origin system and as i mentioned investment based task based even the digital waste that is also being perpetrated from outside the nation another type of crimes which are happening within the country that is illegal lending so what will happen many many times citizens of india are in need of loans not bigger loans but small amounts some amount in thousand and maybe few lakhs and in our banking systems they they maybe they are not qualified to get the loan because of lack of some documents so they download some applications from the play store from apple play store or maybe some third party application stores or maybe through some links these applications are not genuine they are the fraudsters application and when they download them what happens knowingly or unknowingly they give the fraudsters the cyber criminals access of their system and their various type of things their id proofs their contact list the storage location they get compromised the cyber criminals get hold of all these data sets maybe your personal stuff also and loan is given to innocent citizens but loan is very less amount and the conditions are also very loose but after some time they start asking the money back but citizens they, that money asking the money back but the time is there to pay the back the money the citizens say why you are asking in such a less time then the cyber criminals keep on calling them harassment calls are being given to them and when the citizens don't pay back immediately because they have not taken the loan to pay back immediately they have they they want to take some time to pay back because they are the needy persons so what happens these cyber criminals threaten them to show whatever data set they have captured maybe some images maybe some videos personal stuff as i mentioned so in the name of in the name of those data set they blackmail the people and this is how the people come under the scanner of these cyber criminals and ultimately they kept on losing the money by because of the blackmailing which is being done by these criminals the illegal loan apps uh, by which they are being extorted and the money is extorted out of them the next type of crimes as i mentioned at the initial at the starting of the session is uh, impersonation so what happens many times a call is given many times a call is given to the innocent citizens that yes i am calling from so and so bank and your credit card which you have taken maybe debit card that card is under the scanner of some danger so you need to change the system you need to change your passwords or maybe your credit card limit is expired maybe your credit card bill is pending so then they will target those people who are not educated enough to download the apps and to do some sort of changes in the system so when our genuine people or our innocent citizens uh, are not able to do those changes not able to do whatever is required changes in the system as per the advice of these impersonating uh, you know uh, customer care people so what happens 
these innocent citizen becomes ready to share their screens so when they become ready to share their screen so what happens these people take control of the screen screen of phone screen of laptop maybe and they uh, what they do they, they land some malware in the system okay so when they land some malware malware are installed in the system so then by installing these malwares they take the control of the system and the system is controlled then all your otps all your apps lending apps all 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 kind of financial apps they are they are being taken care of and suppose you don't have app, then your data set is there like that many malwares have been loaded in the phones and many times when the when the transactions are being done so by doing the transactions by doing the transactions their otps are forwarded to the systems of the fraudsters and fraudsters take keep on taking out the money maybe through your credit cards or maybe debit cards so this is also kind of a crime which is being done out of the country right now next is impersonation again the kind of account takeover what happens one day one cyber criminal called one uh, one of the lady in the house and she uh, uh, she was informed that uh, the person uh, behaved like one of the uh, priest who has done some puja okay in that house and he said that yes i am in some trouble i am in some trouble and i need some money and i will send you the some money please give me please uh, do some uh, upi transfer to my account because the account which i am holding the money i am not able to take out that money because of some reason but i can transfer that money the lady believed that person and transferred the amount and this person who was impersonating that priest he sent one message you can see the message in the screen idfc first bank 35000 rupees credit then 45000 rupees credit it it looks like a genuine message like money is really being transferred so that lady got a feel that yes money got transferred in her account so she ultimately does three transactions in the upi through upi mode in the account of renu dev so 1000 rupees 14000 rupees and 20000 rupees like that three transactions were done okay equivalent to the amount which she thought that amount has been landed in her account but this was a fake message which she got in the center but she transferred the amount in the right side generally but when she realized that the fraud has taken place with her immediately she complained to the national cyber crime reporting portal okay and we immediately acted our team our team immediately uh, brought into action and then we saw where the money was moving from one account to another account to third account and one by one we were chasing the money and ultimately we were able to stop the money with one of the bank and this of entire amount was frozen within the system and the lady who was duped she was returned this money via the set process by the legal process so this is one of the fraud which i just mentioned to you in the name of nowadays uh, the the artificial intelligence mechanism is being used people are being called and uh, they are being threatened like your son is in trouble or your daughter is in trouble and really from the background you, they will hear the noise ki uh, papa mummy yes i am in the control of these people please give them the money so when uh, your father or mother listens to uh, this voice they understand that the kids are in trouble and they ultimately find themselves giving lot of money to these fraudsters but actually the kid is not in their control this was just the sound of the kid so this is also kind of a impersonation another kind of a crime like i mentioned the various type of uh, applications so what happens ki in the system what they will behave they will take out the, all the control of your system and when they will take out the control of your system they will get all the contact details they will give you video call and then they will give you give you the video call so in that video call they will just run okay a bad movie and when they will run a bad movie what will happen they will record your screen when they will record it seems like you are watching that movie you are watching that obscene content and it will it will look like you are watching the content but actually you are not watching you are just attending a video call so when you see or find yourself in that situation they try to blackmail you. they try to blackmail the innocent citizens so in that fashion also they are getting the money and extorting the money out of the innocent citizen another type of modus operandi which was prevalent earlier but now the percentage has been reduced because of the swift action of the police agencies as well as because of the immediate intervention of the i4c and other agencies so what they were doing they were doing aadhar enable payment system forms so what is the aadhar enable payment system my dear all so this is a kind of a micro atms where you can withdraw them it is not possible to install the atms in every nook and corner of the country given the length and breadth of the nation so what happens the bank gives these services this withdrawal services to various private companies so these companies are called as banking correspondents the banking correspondent corporates bc corporates and these companies hire agents and those agents may be shopkeepers those agents may be 
uh, maybe some uh, some of the Kirana stores or maybe maybe other people also. So they are holding these type of machines where people can come and they can put their fingerprints and withdraw them. Not only this, they can deposit the money also. So this is a kind of a machine where if you put your finger th thumbprint and you will give your Aadhaar number. So you can do fund transfer, you can deposit the money, you can withdraw the cash, you can check your balance also, like an ATM. So what happened, fraudsters, they start taking the control of these machines. And somehow, they hack the data set from the registration and stamp department of one of the state. And when they hack the data set, what did they do? From the South Indian people, from the South India, from the Karnataka, from the Andhra Pradesh, okay, they started taking all the details of the people, like you and me, innocent citizens. In the land, in the stamp department, land revenue department, they have all the details in the system. The details are some impressions or maybe details are Aadhaar card numbers. So they are stored within the system. So what happens when this details were taken by the fraudster? So fraudster took the fingerprints and when they took the fingerprints, they made a negative print from the Photoshop. And this negative was placed on a plain glass. And this negative print was again taken and cloned, okay, in a given casting of a silicon, which is a soft gel, like a finger, like a finger is very soft. So what happens, these all fingerprints were back printed, okay, like a negative within these kind of, this, this kind of uh, jelly, kind of silicon gel. And these fingerprints were utilized to get the money out of those machines. Now fraudsters were having fingerprints, Aadhaar numbers and bank details. So they were using in the night time, all these fingerprints, cloned fingerprints in the silicon gel, fake fingerprints, mm -hmm. and they were taking the money out. So what was happening? So the bank account was belonging to some of the citizen, innocent citizen. Money was also some of the citizen. Details were also citizens, details, general details. But the machine was with the frauds and the money was being withdrawn with the frauds. So this was uh, came to the knowledge of the state police as well as our Indian Cyber Crime Coordination Center and we took immediate steps and various stakeholders were caught, immediate interventions were done and these frauds were arrested. Right? So this is how we see these type of fraud systems. And another type of uh, crimes which generally happen very frequently, whenever there is, there is any event like Chardham Yatra, like Ayodhya and some puja, some darshan, something like that. So what, what fraudsters do, they will make fake says, fake websites and they will make fake websites and in that website it will be published, you do the darshan in half of the prices, book your helicopter ride in half of the prices, book your Aarti, book your Prasad and book Ayodhya Darshan or book something like that. So people generally, when they see, they want to go, they want to visit some pilgrimages, they fall to these fraudsters and they ultimately land in booking through the fake websites and losing them. So these type of crimes, they are very often, but they also come in the domestic crimes, being perpetrated within the idea. So we saw how the different type of crimes occur within the, within the country, who are the perpetrators sitting inside the country as well as outside. Another type of scam is a romance scam. So what is this romance? There are various type of... Uh, websites, applications for marriage and for these type of dating websites are there. Nowadays, youngsters uh, are registering on these websites and uh, both the sites, both the males and females and they are uh, meeting each other and uh, meeting the people and uh, talking over these websites, talking over these applications. So now these fraudsters have generated thousands of accounts in these genuine websites also, like Jeevan Sati, like Matrimony and many others. So what do they do? These websites, they will make fake profiles. So you can see this, this person on the screen, he, uh, this fraudster took the images of this person. Actually, he's a German person. But his images, all these Google images he took and made a fake profile in the name of Dr. Arjun. And Dr. Arjun registered on one of the genuine application, matrimonial application. And he started talking with one of the, one of the female partners. And they started discussing about marriage things and all. So what happens? Ultimately, this person tells, I am coming to India. He perceived as if he is belonging to Netherlands. He showed the genuine tickets to the uh, lady whom he was uh, telling, I am coming to meet you in India. And the tickets were so genuine that it, it feels like tickets are original. And he said, I am coming on this date, on this time, through this flight. And this is my ticket. I will meet you and uh, we will go, go ahead. As far as marriage is concerned, I'll meet your parents. Like that, he made the entire uh, complete environment in order to dupe the innocent citizen. So what happened? The day he's about to land in India, that day this girl receives a call. And the call was received from the 
in Indira Gandhi International Airport to the customs department. Okay, do you know this person, Mr. Arjun? This lady says, yes. How do you know? I have been talking to this person for last three months. Okay, so what is your relation between this person? Yes, we are going to marry. The lady responds, you know this person is a criminal. He has been caught red-handed. He is uh, having drugs in within his uh, uh, baggage and he is being caught. And many other type of, uh, you know, objectionable items he is holding. So, you are also hand in glove with this person. You, ha you have to come to the airport to the customs office. So, like that, they will create a fear psychosis in the system. So, first, they will dupe the innocent citizen. Second, they will create the fear psychosis. Third, they will try to extort them. Now, this lady is also a fraudster who is calling and threatening, uh, uh, impersonating as a custom officer. And this man, uh, Arjun, that is also fake. So, the entire fake uh, impersona is created. Okay, this kind, in order to generate a fear psychosis. One thing is this, second thing is uh, being uh, getting emotional and then giving some amount of money like that. These are called as romance. By utilizing the digital platforms and then finally uh, duping the citizens. Now, question is how we can save these crimes after discussing the modus operandi, how we can save these crimes. So, to save, to immediately uh, report these crimes, so we have our uh, portal, we call it uh, cybercrime.gov.in, that is National Cybercrime Reporting Portal and National Cybercrime Helpline, that is 1930. So, whenever any cybercrime happens, please feel free to dial 1930 and report your cybercrimes. Within this portal, we have more than 300 financial entities where we have wallets, merchants, insurance companies, payment aggregators, payment gateways, banks, public sector banks, private sector banks, grameen banks, cooperative banks. Not only this, we have onboarded various police stations, police agencies, central agencies over this portal so that immediate prompt action can be done. So, it is a two-side system. Police can also take action over the portal. Citizen can also report the cyber crimes over the portal. So, we saw what are the cyber crimes, what are the modus operandi. Now, we are seeing how we can how we can uh, be saved, how we can prevent that. So, we are, there are various features on this portal you will find. You can do complaint filing. You can suspect, sir, suppose you get a mobile number, you, you get a phone call, you can see search that over the portal. You can see the cyber volunteers also, advisories are there, daily the magazines are coming, daily digest, daily cyber news are coming. So all those can be accessed while going through the portal. These are the citizen interface. And if you see, there is a police interface also, there is a bank interface also, telecom interface is also there. Bank can take action, bank can stop the money. But telecom companies, they can stop the mobile numbers from working because ultimately mobile numbers are utilized to contact the citizens. And there is a portal you utilize to act against the complaint, right? And there is a national center of missing and exploited children. So, uh, crime against women, crime against children can also be reported. Police are asking the CCTV footages. Many type of resources are also available in this portal. So, coming to the CFC of RMS, that is your citizen cyber fraud reporting and management system. So, this cyber fraud reporting management system is a part of one of the action center of the Indian Cyber Crime Coordination Center. So, this action center is called as Cyber Fraud Mitigation Center. We call it CFMC. You can think it in the form of a command control center. So, this command control center, it aims to counter the cyber crimes, to stop the cyber crimes. First of all, awareing the citizens. Secondly, stopping the crimes from happening. If suppose crime has happened, then mitigating the effect of those crimes. And once the crime has occurred, when the citizen has lost the money, then preventing that money, freezing that money within the digital ecosystem preventing that money to get withdrawn. So, its holistic mission is to take immediate action, immediately within the golden minutes to stop the money flow out of the system. And if you see that portal is there, major part is the portal where the money is being reported and action is being done. So, there every year lakhs of frauds are reported, 2023 only 11 lakhs fraud have been reported. Much amount of money has been saved. Okay, and if you see whatever the gangs have been exploiting, they have also been identified by utilizing the information available on the portal. So, what is the structure of the CFMC? What are the stakeholders of the CFMC? The first stakeholder, the foremost, the first person who is there as a citizen, because it is in the service of the citizen only. So, citizen, citizen is the first one to report the crime. Once the crime is reported, immediately it is triggered to the banks and the financial intermediaries. They take immediate action. If the money is in first bank, they will start freezing the money. If not in the second bank, then they will start freezing the money like that. And wherever the fake websites are there in the platform like Google, Facebook, those those fake websites are taken down, fake URLs are taken down. And if, if fake numbers are being reported, then immediately those fake numbers are being blocked. Then once the money is frozen, then immediately that information is shared with the law enforcement agencies and they take their immediate action in the form of 
investigation of the case and then arresting the culprits and putting them behind the bar and making sure that they are punished to, to the well proportion punishment available in the legal system of India. So if you see, uh, as I mentioned, CFMC is a physical manifestation of the portal and the portal name is Citizen Financial Cyber Fraud Reporting and Management System where uh, the money reported is being actioned by the banks, by the telecom service providers, by the financial intermediaries. So we have government banks, as I mentioned, private banks are also there, private banks are also there and payment aggregators are also there, e-commerce companies, fintechs are also there, right? And if you see various type of fintech, financial technologies and these technology companies like Paytm, PhonePay, ReservePay, MobiQuick, they are also available on our portal and uh, a lot, a few of the companies, few of these entities are sitting in our cyber fraud mitigation center. They are a part of the cyber fraud mitigation center in in our uh, cyber fraud mitigation center, Indian Cyber Crime Coordination Center. So how do the system works? Uh, either through the portal or through the 1930 helpline, cyber crime helpline, complaint is reported. When the complaint is reported, it moves to citizen uh, financial, if you see cyber financial, citizen financial cyber fraud reporting and management system. And then immediately all the banks, all the financial entities, all the companies are triggered. And like that, almost 60,000 calls we are receiving per day. And if you see, this system has benefited more than 7 lakh victims and a huge amount of huge sum of money has been saved. And you can see in the table, year on year, the amount saved has been increasing and the percentage of the amount hold has been increasing because of the proactive action of all these intermediaries. Now, how does the system look like? Whenever a complaint is being done, you can see this is the complete system, how the complaints look like. This is how a complaint look like. And this is how the accounts, uh, fraudsters account look like. This is called a mule account, which is being reported number of times. So, as I mentioned, the money exits from the system by various modes, by check withdrawal, okay, as well as by ATM withdrawal, by crypto withdrawal, as well as withdrawal by means of uh, investment in the gold, by means of other channels, okay. So, in that ATM withdrawal is most persistent if you see, because if you see cash withdrawal is being done from ATMs within the India, as well as from ATM outside the India. From this slide, you can see there are various ATMs within the India, which are the hotspots. For example, in Delhi, if you see, so 34,000 transactions have happened in the Alwar, 28,000 transactions have happened, Kolkata, 28,000, Patna again, uh, 25,000. Not only this, within the country, withdrawals are being done from outside the country also. For example, Dubai, withdrawals are being done from Hong Kong, from Bangkok, from Russia. So these countries also, how is it possible that withdrawals are being done? Until or unless there is a hand in glove between the fraudsters in India and the external out of the country, or maybe the crimes are being perpetrated from outside. So this is an indication itself that cyber fraudsters have their link, transboundary links, and the crimes have the transnational, transboundary repercussions. So, we have taken actions, we have sensitized all the agencies, and Cyber Fraud Mitigation Center believes in working in real time, immediate action in order to give full support to the citizen, and we request the citizen, we do awareness campaigns with the citizens, and we make sure the citizens remain aware, they don't fall prey to all these type of cyber crimes, and once by Unfortunately, they fall the, uh, prey to all these events. Then immediately they report because immediate reporting is the key to save full amount of money. The, the faster you will report, the easier it is for us to get the money recovered and to arrest the culprits and to nab the culprits uh, and to punish them and to expose them to the criminal justice system. Indian Cyber Crime Coordination Center is a nodal agency, it is a uh, central agency which is working under the Ministry of Home Affairs and uh, this agency believes in proactive actioning against the cyber crime, making sure that cyber space is safe for the citizens, for making them to operate freely within the system, within the digital systems and making sure all the digital transactions are being done safely with them, awareing them and uh, sensitizing them and making sure when they are defrauded, they are giving immediate relief and in coordination with the state police agencies, duty police agencies, we work and ensure that cyber crimes are thwarted, the overall intentions of the criminals are defeated and the country can be made free of the cyber crimes and cyber criminals. So thank you so much. This is it. Now the questions are welcome. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing all these details with our viewers uh, regarding cyber crime. Uh, well, one pertinent question that arises in my mind is um, 
with respect to social media for example uh, there are a lot of students that are now raised using social media or internet for one or the other thing now how to navigate our way to the safe platform suppose there is a link we get a uh, uh, link shared by one of our friends maybe on social media or on messages now how do we come to know whether this unknown link is safe to open or not yeah very good question simran ji so uh, there are set platforms for example for trading investment uh, there is a agency known as security exchange board of india we call it sebi so there are recognized platforms recognized channels which sebi is recommending and sebi is uh, uh, you know these are regulated by security exchange board of india whereas the channels which are defrauding citizens the platforms which are openly roaming in the facebook whatsapp instagram telegram so those channels are not recognized by them so i would request all the viewers and citizens who want to invest money uh, they kindly go through the, check the sanctity check the veracity of these links and these kind of platforms through this website and suppose uh, you get a malicious link don't trust any link don't uh, click on any of the link received via whatsapp via messages because uh, these kind of frauds are being sensitized to the banks also now banks have stopped sharing any links any kind of Uh, keys any kind of whatsapp messages through this to click here you will get these reward points and all these things so in order to check the veracity kindly contact your branch kindly contact those regulators and then only invest all right sir uh, for example you mentioned about sebi uh, there are times when we used to receive uh, uh, different emails from our banks now even in some of the malicious emails they seem to be so perfect and so accurately made that they resemble the actual emails that have been sent by the mail uh, maybe for one or the other purpose maybe updating our aadhar card or further documentation now how to figure out whether this particular email is a spam and uh, whether this particular email is the correct one yeah again very good question so uh, what happens uh, simran ji you have to a little bit smart in this because a genuine email uh, will always have all the credentials in a in a organized manner wherever a fraud a fake email will always have some sort of flaws for example this email will be from uh, gmail whereas it will be written in the email sbi.gmail.com something like that so there will be some element of uh, fraud in that email address first of all kindly check the email address because genuine email address sbi will have their own for example uh, akhilesh kaur at the rate sbi.co.in okay dot com or something like that first thing secondly within the email structure itself you will be able to see there are repetition of the things like for uh, for example few days back there were emails when the there was a rush of the uh, income tax returns so there were the emails from the income tax department and 3344 screenshots were there four signatures of the income tax commissioners were there so there are multiple images there are multiple documents attached which are actually uh, not the general genuine documents so if you are little bit smart and if you understand the psychology of with the sender so you can avoid clicking all those links and you can yourself identify that yes it is a genuine email and it is a kind of a fake email. so we need to be very careful and aware yes all right and, and i would like to sure, i would like sure. to advise uh, uh, your viewers uh, everybody here that uh, nowadays uh, even all the agencies have stopped giving the links because they see that these links have become the vectors of spreading the cyber crime so they have stopped giving any link over the email or any link over messages or whatsapp or facebook anywhere so this is my request to all that uh, none of the uh, link is nowadays genuine so kindly avoid clicking on any of the link maybe genuine please contact your branch All right. Uh, I hope that our viewers watching the program they'll take a note of all the minute details that have been shared by you as a part of this conversation. Thank you so much, Akhilesh sir, for connecting with us. Thank you for your time and the information that you have shared with us. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Simanji. Thank you for giving opportunity. Good day. Thank you. Uh, thank you to all the viewers who have connected with CIT and CRT for this particular live interactive program. And before wrapping up the session, let's have a quick look at our screens in order to understand better about the five days online training program. Just have a look at your screens, and you'll understand the five days online training program schedule. For example, this was the day one where we discussed about the recent cyber crime trends in the financial frauds and CFMC. And tomorrow we are going to deal. more and discuss more on cyber security threats intelligence and forensics in the financial landscape 
and viewers you all know the different mediums through which you can connect with us this is a detailed program schedule for all of you and how you can participate in our course all the steps have been laid down for you well this is a wrap up for this particular program where we were discussing more upon uh, recent cyber crime trends and the financial frauds and how to deal with them we had with us our resource person a word of thanks goes out to akhilesh sir and also to all the viewers for connecting with us let me apprise you that next up we have our program of sahyog where we try to provide guidance for mental well being and psychosocial support to all our learners so stay connected and keep watching with their channels and viewers we will be right back within few minutes for our next next program that is sahyog so stay connected with ncrt official and tune in with us to pme with their channel number 6 to 12 namaskar